Hey everybody, this is Brian from Carving is Fun, and today I'm going to share with you my picks for the best and worst pocket knives for whittling and wood carving. Now here I have about $500 in different knives. Um, these are all picked because they were either marketed to uh, the wood carving and whittling community or they're suggested by others um, saying that they're a great knife or they're just more representative of that type of a knife. Now I'm going to separate this video into five different sections and you'll be able to see all the different timestamps in the bottom so if you want to just jump to one of them have at it. First part is going to be multi-bladed knives which is just going to basically be knives with more than one knife associated in there. Um, then your regular single bladed knives and then more multi-tool style knives where it has several different knives inside of there. And then my top picks for which ones I like the most and then the ones that I believe you should just avoid altogether. Now a quick disclaimer for some of you guys, I know that there are a lot of fans of some of the knives on here. Just keep in mind that my views and opinions of these knives are primarily going to be focused on wood carving and whittling. So. Some of these knives you can use for general purpose, uh, everyday carry stuff, but for the purpose of this video, they are going to be focused on just wood carving and whittling. Now how I judged every single one of these knives was based on about five different sections. The first one being the edge grind and sharpness of the blade. Um, I'm primarily going to use the terms utility sharp and whittling sharp. Utility sharp is just, it's sharp enough to get the job done for everyday basic uh, basic stuff, but whittling sharp, it is sharp enough to easily slice through wood, uh, primarily basswood, um, very, smooth and, very smoothly and easily. Uh, the second one is going to be steel hardness. So that's primarily referring to how uh, hard the steel is itself. Uh, the main range I'm aiming for is going to be a Rockwell hardness of 58 to 61. Any less than that, it usually doesn't hold its edge very well um, and can dull out much faster. Any harder than that, it has a, more of a chance to start chipping. And then we're going to go into blade thickness. Now, a thicker blade is a little bit harder to cut through wood with. Uh, it's just more of a wedge you have to push through, but if you use like a thinner blade, it makes it that much easier just to push the, the knife through the wood. I find a thinner blade is much, much easier to carve and whittle with. Fit and finish, just basically how well the knife is put together. Any weird little things like rivets sticking up that are not ground down, or extra wobble or just uh, weird designs that don't make it uh, very nice. And then finally price. Obviously we don't want to be spending an arm and a leg just to carve up some wood. There are nicer knives and they are more expensive but you can get away with some of the cheaper ones as well and some of them are very affordable but also really good knives. Now all these knives will have their own individual review to them so keep an eye out for those if you want to see any certain knife specifically and more in more detail. So I'm going to go through these as quickly as possible because I got a good amount of knives up here. So let's start off with the multi-bladed knives. Um, this is the Old Timer 440T Workmate. It has four different knives in there and um, with two of them being my favorite knives for wood carving and whittling. Uh, the ones I like the most are, are this one and this one right here. Uh, this one's just a nice all-around edge for carving wood. Uh, and whittling with and then this one's good for detail work. Now some of the things you're going to want to keep in mind when you get this I would consider them to be more utility sharp i.e. they're going to be able to do most basic tasks but if you want to make it easier to whittle through wood uh, you're going to need to hone it down and sharpen it a bit more. Uh, it doesn't need too much extra work. The steel on it is 7CR17 which has a hardness of about 57 to 59. So it's on the lower edge of that hardness spectrum that we're looking for, but it can get the job done. It has okay uh, fit and finish. Um, some of the rivets are ground down, but these ones kind of stand up. And on my personal one, I actually had to do a little bit of work. You see how this part right here is 
uh, sitting there and not going all the way down. At the beginning, I noticed that the actual inner lip right here where the knife was making contact with, the knife was actually cutting into it because it was bowed in. It was just too tight. So I actually had to go and grind down the inside metal there to make it so the knife could actually fully close. But the thing that makes this knife pretty dang good is that it is an affordable knife. It is about $17, or at least that's where I found it, uh, what price I found it for. So if you were looking for an affordable option, this would be a great one to go uh, go with. I do suggest getting in, getting this one if you're just looking for a basic whittling knife to start off with. All right, now let's do the flex cut whittling jack. Now this one, I'm going to say this right now, it, this is my personal favorite one of all of these right here for a general whittling knife. I actually carry this one around with me every day. Um, I have its own little sheath that I put it in as well as a little diamond uh, sharpening tool if I need to. And I can shove a little uh, thumb guard in there so that I don't have to worry about cutting myself. This goes with me everywhere I go. I pack it with my regular everyday carry folder and also my multi-tool. So I carry these three knives with me every single day. Um, that way I have a special knife that I use specifically just for whittling and then I have my normal everyday knives with me. But this is a great uh, wood carving and whittling knife. It is made by FlexCut which is a company that makes wood carving tools. Which makes it that much better because they know what they're doing for a really de a pretty dang good whittling knife. Um, it's sharp and ready for immediate use right out of the box. There's no need to hone it. It's ground to a decent cutting edge. They use high carbon spring steel uh, for, this, for the knives with a hardness of 59 to 61. Um, the blades are relatively thin. They're not too terribly thick which make it pretty good for slicing through wood. They have a pretty nice fit and finish to them. Uh, the, the outside, I feel like the wood on the outside is a little bit kind of cheap. It's almost like a like a laminate overlay. It looks nice. I'm not too terribly concerned by it, but there's nothing really weird uh, poking my hand when I hold on to it. Um, just keep in mind with this, the blades are a bit stiff to open and close, which is fine. Um, you, so if you're one of those people that really like to have locking blades, I doubt that this one's going to close up on your hand. Um, they have about, I consider them to be an average price range for a decent knife at about uh, 45 bucks. Pretty dang good. Uh, they're also pretty comfortable. They are reminiscent of, the handles are reminiscent of their regular flex cut wood carving knives handles. So it's somewhat the same shape. But like I said, I highly suggest this one. This one is my favorite. It has both a two inch roughing knife and a one and a half inch detail knife to get your job done there. And then we have the Sarge Knives Vision Maker Carving Knife. Now this one is a pretty neat little uh, carving knife here. It, it's more like a portable chip carving knife, uh, which is kind of like what the, the knives are shaped like. It's pretty dang cool. I, I kind of like this one actually for what it is. Um, it doesn't come too razor sharp right out of the box. It's utility sharp, so you're going to have to hone it down. They use 440C steel for the blades, which has a hardness of about 58 to 60 is what I am seeing online, what people are comparing it to. Um, pretty dang good knife. I like it. They have decently thin blades. They're not as thin as the flex cut versions, but they they do slice through the wood pretty well. Um, they have a pretty nice fit and finish to them. I really like the wood laminate or the wood panels on there. They are gorgeous. Now one of the things I found on the knife that I wasn't too terribly fond of was the wood panel has a little bit of a crack in them. Let's see if I can I can probably get into the video here, but it's right by the rivet. It's just a, a minor little cosmetic detail. But for the price I paid for, which was about 18 bucks, um, it's a pretty affordable knife and I, I can deal with the minor detail issue like that. Um, it, the, I think this knife is more in line for a traveling chip carver kind of person rather than a general wood carver or whittler. It's still a great option for 18 bucks. 
Now going into some knives that I am not going to fully suggest for you just picking up if you're looking for a dedicated whittling knife. Now this is the Buck 301. Um, it comes to you what I would call utility sharp, like it'll get everything done. You will need to hone it up if you do want to use it for any sort of wood carving and whittling. I picked this version compared to some of the other cheaper buck knives, primarily because it has a nicer steel to it. This one is using 420 high carbon steel, or their 420 HC. Uh, and these have a hardness of about 58. It's on the lower edge of the spectrum for wood carving and whittling, but it does get the job done pretty well. They have another type of steel that you'll see on their cheaper versions uh, of these knives, which is called 420J2. That is more their general purpose steel. If you're going to use a, a buck knife for wood carving whittling, get the 420HC steel. It's going to be much harder and a little bit better to use for wood carving and whittling. Now this one does have a thicker blade to it, so the blade thickness is a bit more, um, which makes it harder to whittle with, but it still gets the job done, mostly if you get it honed down nice and razor sharp. Now these do have a decent finish to them. The rivets do poke up a little bit, but they're not really obnoxious like some of the other knives that I have up here, like the, the old timer one. That's, theirs are a bit more obnoxious. These have more of a higher average price than some of the other knives, but you're paying for the, the quality of steel on it. I think these are about $55 each. Still a decent knife, mostly if you're going to be carrying around for everyday carry stuff and just use them for everyday use. If you want to designate one of the knives on here for just for whittling, I probably end up picking this knife. Just It's easier to hone down compared to the other knives. But great knife all around. The Case XX Seahorse Whittler. I wanted to really like this knife. Don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful knife. Great looking knife. But just when I got it, I was actually kind of disappointed. Uh, starting off here, it is util utility sharp. It needs some serious work on the cutting edge and honing it to be able to be useful for whittling. You can't whittle with it right out of the box, or at least not very effectively. They do use a decent steel, which is the, uh, it's a 420 high carbon steel with a hardness of 58. Um, it has a pretty dang good finish on the knife. I mean, it, it's freaking gorgeous. I, I just want you to know I love the way this knife looks. They make other uh, colors, different, different patterns. Now, one... One of the things I wasn't too terribly fond about this knife was how thick the blades are, or at least the main blade is. Just look how thick that blade is. It is, it's got a really steep cutting angle on there. It's more like a, a, a chopping knife more than a, something that you'd want to start shaving wood off with. And just for example, I have the flex cut whittling knife. You can see there's a pretty massive difference in blade width there. Uh, these are more in line for what you'd want for whittling knives or a beginner whittling knives, but this one's just ridiculously thick. Um, that's just their main blade. And then there's, they have other blades on here which are smaller and really thin. But again, these ones are utilitary, utility sharp. They are not whittling sharp at all. I did put a decent edge on this guy right here. Uh, you can see that it is pretty dang thin. It's a pretty nice thin knife. When I compare it to that flex cut again, you'll see it's, it's really nice and thin, but there's another issue with it as well. Primarily because it is a bit of a softer blade, it flexes a bit, and I did not like how much it flexes. So if you're going to be whittling any sort of harder woods, that might make it harder for you to put in some detail in there without it, the knife flexing on you and, and causing your cuts to go off to the side. Uh, just cut slowly is all I'd suggest with that one. But again, I do not recommend this knife whatsoever. It's an expensive knife, 70 bucks. I can get the flex cut uh, whittling jack and it is way better than this one right here. 
and it is a little bit cheaper. It was 20 bucks cheaper than this guy. So yeah, I'd hard pass on the case cutting knife there. Now let's get into the single bladed knives here. Uh, these all will have one knife in there. It's you know, just going to be a, a dedicated blade. And we're going to start off with the Openel carbon steel folding knives. Now I am specifically calling out the carbon ones. If it doesn't have carbon on there, don't get it. Seriously, it's not going to have the right edge retention on there. Uh, it's going to use a softer steel. Get the one with the carbon on there. Now these ones are these knives are really affordable and really good wood covering knives. I like them a lot. Uh, they come out of the box whittling sharp, but just the combination of the thin blade that they have, which is it's pretty freaking thin, and the decent steel that they use. They use uh, what they are calling XC90 carbon steel. Has a hardness of about 58 to 59, which is on the lower edge of the spectrum for whittling and wood carving, but it just it cuts th through basswood like butter. It's really really awesome knife. Uh, the fit and finish is pretty good, and they have this really neat locking feature on there for the blade for the number sixes and larger, where it just makes it feel like a fixed bladed knife. I mean it's. Is really really sturdy and comfortable. Uh, again, these are affordable. This is the number seven, and I picked it up for about 15 bucks shipped to my door. Great knife. They they sell the smaller versions. Uh, if you get the number five or smaller, they don't have the locking blade on them, but that's fine because it's kind of like a friction knife where it, it's not. You can't flip it open or anything like that. It will stay put. Great knife option. I like that one. And then going into this this one right here, which is the Master Carver Pocket Whittler Chew. This is also a really cool knife. It's a purpose-built whittling knife, a single blade whittling knife with a locking blade on it. It comes borderline whittling sharp. It's almost there, I feel like. You do need to strop it a little bit. Uh, but one thing I want to point out is it has a very interesting edge grind to it where this side right here is flat and all the way down. It's a flat grind from back to front, but this side right here has a minor bevel going in on just this side only, which is okay. Um, but I found it is more beneficial to right-handed wood carvers and whittlers doing push cuts with it because you can put the flat edge down to the wood and you don't have to try and angle the knife to work with the bevel. Now if you're doing a paring cut, yeah, you're going to have to work with that a little bit, but this is, for what it is, this is a pretty decent knife. It has a decent blade thickness. It's a little bit thicker than some of the standard whittling knives, but it's pretty, pretty freaking awesome. Now the Master Carver knives use a pretty nice steel on it. It is a 440 steel. If I can get that without any light shining on it. 440 steel with a Rockwell hardness of about 61, which is in the higher edge of uh, where you want your whittling knife to be. Pretty nice knife. I like it a lot. It also has a really nice fit and finish. It feels like a solid knife. The rivet is ground down. It The, the metal just looks nice and uh, polished when you get it. Uh, these are an average price knife of about $40. I think is a pretty good value for what it is. It's a great purpose built whittling knife if you just wanted a single blade. I do highly recommend this one. I really like this one. And then I also threw in here, this is more of a regular general knife. This is a buck 55 folding knife. I picked this one specifically because it is close in comparison to the Master Carver Pocket Whittler there. Uh, it's almost the same, uh, just with a different blade style to it. Uh, the, the blade itself, it, cutting edge, is a little bit longer on the 55 uh, with a little bit shorter handle, but overall length is about the same. There are both locking knives, which is great. So this one does have a lock on it. Now one thing you need to keep in mind on it is it comes to you utility sharp, and you're gonna have to hone the edge down a decent amount to get it to be whittling sharp. 
after that, it's a pretty cool whittling knife. I do recommend this one if you have it already, but if you're going to pick between these two knives uh, for the price, I'm going to give it to the Master Carver. It is a bit nicer all around, primarily because it has a nicer steel to it. Now this one, also, the Buck 55 also uses the 420 high carbon steel like you would with the, the Stockman knife, the 301 over here. Pretty good steel. It's on the lower edge of the hardness of about 58 that you want for whittling, but it will get the job done pretty good. Uh, the fit and finish is okay. I did not like the, the rivet sticking up on it. It just, I don't know. It, it somewhat bothers me, mostly when I can get this one with it ground down. It just, it feels a little funky in the hands. You can feel it, um, but it's not a deal breaker. A little bit on the higher end of the average prices for a decent knife, which at about 50 bucks. Again, if I were to choose between the two, I'd pick the, the Master Carver for 10 bucks cheaper. But great knife. If you have it already, use it. Good knife. All right, and now for a knife that I've seen some people recommend on YouTube and, and various other places too. This is the Jabe's Cutlery The Whittler. I'm going to just say it straight up right now. This knife is garbage. Uh, it is an awful knife. It, it is, it's a, in the affordable price range of about 9 bucks, but you can just put that 9 bucks in, in so many better places. You can go and buy the open L carbon steel or the old timer whittling knife just for about 6 to $8 more. And you get so much more function out of these knives than this waste of metal. Um, I sound pretty harsh, but let's just do a quick little overview of it. Starting from when I opened the, opened this up out of the, the packaging, it comes duller than a butter knife. I could literally put my finger, press it on the blade, and run it up and down the blade, and it would not break the skin at all. It would hardly do anything. I re didn't register anything more than a dull edge of metal, but not a good knife whatsoever. They say that it's high carbon cutlery stainless steel. I uh, could not find anything on what it actually was or what the hardness rating is. The finish of it is awful. Um, my blade actually came a little bit bent off to the side, so when I I close it, you can see it's it's kind of just sticking off to the side, so I have to push it off in order to get it to where I uh, to be straight. And then just the overall size of this knife, I mean, let, let's compare it to the Master Cairo one. Which one do you think is going to fit in your hand more comfortably and allow you to have better control of the knife? Obviously not this guy right here. You're going to want to pick this guy up right if you want. Uh, if I were comparing between those two. If I were comparing between the Openel, again, which one looks like it's going to be easier and more comfortable to hold? Definitely the Openel. Also, just like, there's a bunch of wobble to it. I am not anywhere near impressed with this knife. So for general purpose whittling, no, this is a definitely no-go. Now, let's go into some of the uh, more multi-tool style knives. We're going to start off here with the Swiss Army Camper Knife. This is made by, I, I don't know how to say the, the company saying Victorinox. I, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sure some of y'all know how to say it properly, but I have here the Camper version. I picked this one specifically because it comes with two actual knives in there of different lengths. So you have like more of like a roughing knife and a, a detail knife, as well as a neat little saw so you can use it to really rough out dimensions or cut off a branch if you're out camping. Now these blades do come utility sharp. You're gonna have to hone them down a little bit to get them to be sharp enough to be able to whittle some wood. Now they're using high carbon stainless steel for their, their blades but it has a Rockwell hardness of about 56, which is below your threshold of where you want your ideal whittling knife to be. I am including this one in the list as a recommended knife, primarily because they are affordable at about, I think this one was $27 or so. Um, and it comes with some more utility items on there, like the saw, 
which is just handy to have, mostly if you're out camping and whittling on the go. It's decent fit and finish on there. It's, it's a Swiss Army knife. Everyone knows about them. They're quite useful to have for all around everyday knife. I do recommend them just, just to have one in general is a good idea. Let's put it that way. I'm going to do these two at the same exact time because they are basically the same thing but from different companies and in different steel quality. On the top here we have the flex cut carbon jack and then the old timer splinter. Now I'm going to just say this right, near, right now off the bat, if you're serious about wood carving on the go, which is what you're going to be using these guys for, you're not going to be using them at a bench like I'm sitting here for, you're going to have designated tools that are more comfortable to hold and are, are easier to use. If you're serious about carving on the go, you're going to be picking up the flex cut carbon jack. This one has much higher quality steel. It's using a high carbon spring steel with a hardness of 59 to 61. They both have the same tools inside of here. Now I have the full comparison review video on, on here. I'll link it uh, down in the bottom so you can check it out. But if you want to see more between the two different knives, uh, go check out that video. Keep in mind this is a $120 knife, but it does come with some extra stuff in there. You get a sheath with it and you get their slip strap which helps you keep each of the tools nice and sharp like let's see if I can pull this one out here let's pull out the the hook knife it's a special knife there and then they have a spot where you can just hone the the blade because it's it's actually contoured to fit the the knife then it has a small little leather strap to keep the other side nice and honed uh, this one also has a, a locking blade on it so you can keep the blades nice and in position this one uses a very very cheap steel it is 65 n and carbon spring steel with a hardness of 53 to 55. it is very soft not only that the the blades that you get out of it require a lot of work like i actually had to put work into this and just to make it look like this it came with this awful looking a wedge cut in there that would not cut basswood at all. I had to put a lot of work into it. When compared to the flex cut knife, it, it, this just carves, literally will carve circles around the, the old timer version. But still, this is a more affordable knife. It's $18. And like I said before, all these knives will have their own individual review. These guys will have a comparison review against each other, so if you want to see them side by side, check out that video. Um, but let's go over the ones, the knives that I suggest uh, for people getting if they're trying to pick up a knife just for whittling and wood carving. Now the ones that I suggest from the multi-bladed knives are going to be the Old Timer uh, 440T and the FlexCut Whittling Jack. Primarily this one because it's more of a affordable knife, um, but yet it gets the job done uh, pretty dang well. But if you want a more dedicated whittling knife on the go with um, more than one blade, the whittling jack is going to be it. Now if you're just wanting a single bladed knife for whittling on the go, I suggest the Open L carbon steel knives and then the Master Carver pocket whittler. These two are great knives, and if you just want a more affordable one, open all the way. 15 bucks. this knife is hard to beat. I, I've tried. I can't find anyone that I like better than this one for just a single-bladed knife. But if you want a more purpose-built willing knife with a locking blade that feels really nice in a hand chew, the Master Carver uh, Pocket Willer is the way to go. Now, for more of a multi-tool kind of whittling knife, it's going to be between the Swiss Army knives and then the flex cut carbon jack here. Two big differences in price. This one is probably, you can get these between 25 to, I don't know, $40 depending on how awesome you want your knife to be with how many ever tools. But the Camper is the one that I picked again because it has two different size knives and it has a saw in there. The flex cut carbon jack is going to be about 120 to 160 dollars depending on where you get it from 
but great knife if you want a nice all-around tool. Now some of the knives that I've seen people suggesting and that are out there that I don't suggest at all are going to be the Case X Seahorse Whittler. Just, I was disappointed and I spent a lot of money on it and I, and it just failed to perform to my expectations compared to some of the other knives. Like, like I was saying, this one is far superior, the Flex Cut Whittling Jack is far superior to the the Case X, X uh, Seahorse Whittler here just for the purpose of whittling. Not the best for, for whittling. The Jabe's Cutlery, Cutlery, the Whittler, avoid this one. It is a waste of $9. It is a waste of steel. It is a waste of my time to even have this freaking freaking thing on there. I can't believe someone else actually suggested that stupid thing. Um, if you can't tell, I'm annoyed by this knife. And then the old timers splinter. It's cool in concept, but execution is very poor. The steel is awful. It is not a useful knife. You're going to spend more time sharpening and honing this knife than you are going to be using it. And even when you do use it, you're probably not going to get it sharp enough to the point where you can whittle safely with it. It's fine if you're just wanting a super cheap knife that you're going to use like maybe once or twice. But if you're serious about uh, having a really cool knife with a bunch of different tools in there, this is going to be the flex cut carbon jack variant. Now I also have a bunch of other videos on here comparing different knives. Uh, feel free to check those out. Now feel free to like and subscribe. I got a bunch of other videos on here as well to check out. I appreciate you watching and have yourself a good day.